See, if Black Clover was like this from the very start, it wouldn't have had such a underwhelming to meh to oh god get this out of my fucking face anime adaptation. Like, this stuff, like this episode, like, I don't mean to say this, like, this wasn't like a bot, like a giant, like huge, like, Sakuga fest or anything like that. I'm more just talking about the problems that I'd had from the start with, like, Let's grind this fucking pacing to a halt. Like, and I know, I know I talk about it every week because it's a problem. And they finally just went, all right, guys. So we wanted to have a good episode this week. And we don't want to, like, keep guys, people waiting on that. I fucking hope this stays like this because this episode was probably not my, uh, it probably wasn't my favourite episode of Black Clover, but I'd probably put it in the fucking top ten just because of, like, how it was going to scene to scene to scene to scene, like, stuff was happening and it was not, like, dragging on a single scene at all throughout this entire episode. Like, I think it, it was a lot to do with storyboarding and it was a lot to do with, like, Let's go through two and a half chapters worth of material because, boy, th this episode really needed it and it really gave us a good-ass cliffhanger for the ending of this episode. So, as you guys could tell, this was a battle royale. So, it was going to be nine versus nine. So, it was going to be, like, the old man's, like, Sea Temple Guardians versus, like, Astus Gang. However, though, he decided to pull a little bit of the sly one. And it's like, wait, there's ten of us, though. So, what's happening? And they end up pulling a fast one where it was like, ah, not you, though, Yami. You're a little too strong. We can't be having you. And, like, literally, the old man, like, said, yeah, sit down. I've got some Doritos. I've got some Pepsi. Like, let's put some bets on here and like he's like you piece of shit I wanted in on this thing I, I kind of like that with the army he was like no I wanted to fight you fuck you get me in there and he's like nah it's fine here let me just just bribe you don't worry about it and immediately when I was like the one bit I was worried with this episode I'm like oh my god they're gonna drag on this single panel with like Gao, Asta, Luck and Magna where they just bombard like four of them at once and I was like there you go. And because the guy is like gloating and he's like, oh, all of them, like, you, they're all cast as like lower class, like, um, uh, mages and all that, and then the black balls. But like, technically, a lot of them are intermediate knights to like high rank, like, strength wise. Like, definitely, you can see with Magna Luck, like, Asta, like, and all the rest of them, even Gaush, as much as like you see with these characters and how shitty they do some of their jobs, it's like strength wise, they're, they're pretty high to like. I'd say, I think, where Sol is, where Leo, like, kind of where, like, the lieutenants are, right? So, like, um, a lot of the, like, second-in-command, that's kind of where a lot of their, like, power-wise, they're kind of, like, in that sort of uh, gauge barrier. I'd say, like, maybe Magna a little low. Luck is probably clear. I'd say Ma a Luck in the current manga, I'd say, would be actually on that level, but probably not at this point, because... You see them, they bombard these people, go straight in, right next, guys. So, uh, you see the thing with Noel as well. Noel go against someone, which they don't linger on that. Spoiler, like, they like as you see, like, Charmy goes in, and it's like, she gets knocked out by this girl, and it's like, oh, look, it's Kahono. And then you see a cool little thing where it's like the three, temp uh, the three guardians, like, are the strongest people on the series. Like, they're all a family. It's Kahono, it's then her brother, Kiato, who Asta ends up fighting, who... I like some of the effects, and I was like, they're actually doing this kind of really nice, like, not fluid animation, but I was like, oh, I like this kind of, like, effect and coloring that they've got with, like, Kyoto with his swords and all that. And he's like, yeah, you're, sure, your anti magic stuff, that's an interesting thing, but I'm a good swordsman, and guess what? You just swing those things around like an idiot, so, hey, when it, like, my dance magic, which seemingly, like, as well, like, when we kind of, we kind of see it, it's like, it's more like it affects and it kind of hypnotizes a little bit, like, uh, like it kind of, like, messes with Asa's senses a little bit, and this whole stupid idea of, like, oh, I'll just uh, meet up with that, uh, basically his whole thing is, like, I'm just gonna have to confuse the opponent by dancing and doing some dumb stuff as well, I'm not sure what, I, like, Asa, that's kind of your whole strategy to dealing with them, but Luck and Magna end up fighting the dad, who is a, um, all his stuff is like sea god and he is the actual strongest out of the group and it takes magna and luck to even go toe to toe with this guy and he's like huh i i, I respect you guys but let's get a little bit serious and that leads into one of my favorite moments where it just <laughs> poof, jumps in veto 
yo, what's up? I want to go. Like, because, like, Yami's there talking, like, literally a different, like, a literally, I'd like to say 40 seconds before that. He's like, hey, you do know, like, the Midnight Sun guys are out here looking for, like, this stone? You really should just hand it over to me. We're handing, like, we're literally handing your asses here because the only ones that aren't participating in this is pretty much Grey. Grey is, like, the one that isn't doing anything. And same thing with Finral. Finral is just, like, roaming, uh, running around like a huge coward and it's, like, kind of, like, fixated on that. Vanessa, you get a really cool little moment with her, though. I really like this in the manga. I was like, oh, shit, are we actually going to see something with Vanessa now? And we see her. She's there, like, not, like, drunk, but she's like, man, I'm sobering up. Ah, this sucks. And she's just got this one guy, you know, like, tied up. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And you're like, oh, Vanessa just decided to just take it up a level where it's just, just like, I want to get this done and over with. And it's like, you can see, and... I guess, like, um, Quartet Knight is kind of uh, sport, I guess, or showing you a little bit more what her main role is in the Black Bulls and, like, some of the more interesting stuff that she can do. So, definitely, like, I was like, oh, shit, yeah, like, get, fucking give me more Vanessa. Because, like, Vanessa's, like, a really cool character and she's going to be getting some time to shine soon. So, I'm very much looking forward to when we see more of that stuff going down the road because it is fun. It is enjoyable, and overall, like, Vanessa is a very interesting character with, like, kind of, like, her, uh, everything she can do with her string magic and, like, all the webs and everything. I was like, I really like what she can do with her stuff, and, like, it's, it gets so much more interesting later on what exactly kind of, like, support slash, like, ADC carrier <laughs> she can kind of be with some of the stuff that she does. But, like, overall, like, the only person that got knocked out of this entire competition is Chami. Because Chami was, like, got caught off guard by Kohono, which then Noel is now facing off with. And Kohono is like, I still want to be your friend and I like you guys and everything. It's just that both Kyoto and Kohono, like, have to do this because their their literal dreams are on the line. Because they, they are not permitted to go out really to the surface world for the most part then like like they can go to the beach side and that's pretty much the only real like kind of restriction that they can go but at, at that point they're not allowed to go to capital they're not allowed to explore anywhere else and that's kind of like their whole you guys are kind of forbidden for ever really trespassing outside your home and it's like the uh, the grandpa like kind of said hey if you guys win against Asta and if you win against all these guys then i'll remove this kind of ban that you have on our like people like this thing that hasn't been done and he's like because you can tell that the guy he's like he loves his kid grandkids and he loves his son and he's like i these guys really do deserve better but we need to kind of prove that we can defend this and you guys want to achieve your dreams which kiato is like he wants to be a famous dancer and then kohono she wants to be the singer so you can see like the two little uh rivalry and it was like i really liked that i think like also as well i like the voice actor that they got for kiato i thought he was really good i think he's As I think he's Asahi from like Haikyuu. I think that's what he's from because I've heard that voice actor before so I know some people are going to say because a few people will mention as well like Yato was voiced by like some famous voice actor so I was like oh okay like on there because I know that was the same thing with um with Liar as well where he was uh, a famous voice actor as well or at least an actor that he was kind of portrayed off and he got to play them and I was like that's a cool one but Kyoto was a little bit more memorable I was like oh I actually know this voice actor and I was like I wonder who he is and overall like like I said the episode like, it just went to scene to scene to scene to scene and that was like this is what like the manga feels like the pacing well and there was a few additional scenes that they added in here where I was like I like that I like that it wasn't dragging on it wasn't like uh, doing any of that stuff now next week they were showing the preview and just to say, we went through two and a bit chapters this week, so definitely the pacing wise, I was like, that that's what we should have had from the start. Like we should have we should have already been way past this, and like maybe at this point, beginning the witch arc or something. Like I felt like this is where we'd be at that like perfect moment, and now like with seeing this stuff going down, like with this episode, I'm like next week they're like we're i think we're in the 60s now i think we're like somewhere around about there if not we're in like the uh, late 50 odd chapters and all that it's been a while since i've read some of this stuff now i looked at it and i'm like that's not the chapter that happens afterwards because we had a bit of luck lighting but it's like 
ne- ne- the one before that, uh, I think after that, is this flashback that they keep showing about, like, with Magna and Luck, and it was showcasing a lot about that. You saw a lot about, like, Hiato and Asta running to the destination, so I think that's another good sign that we're either going to be focusing a heavy a lot on that flashback, which really is, uh, I really do like that flashback, and it leads into with the title as well, I'm like, it's going to lead into one of my favorite moments with Luck and Magna, so I'm looking very much forward to that. Overall, the this was a really good episode, and I just wish the rest of this... Sh- because at the end of the day, like, when pe- people know and all that, I'm honest with these show- like with the shows and all that I talk about, where it's like, I review these and I have a lot of fun with them, but again, like, I'm at this point where I'm like, would I even recommend the Black Clover anime? I recommend the English dub over, like, um, a lot with the sub and all that, with the- all the problems on there, but it's like... The pacing is so fucking grueling. Like, I just could not recommend it a lot of the time. Whereas, like, if... I would say if, like, uh, like if we had that rough 13 episode... Because like, that's the thing. I know a lot of people can't even do that. Like, some people, like, back in the day were like, I could, I've got a lot of time. I can wait for the slow burn until it gets really good. And, like, Black Clover was like, you get through, like, the first 13 chapters, maybe, like, 12, and then it's like it started coming into its own shine with the Mars stuff. And then even, I say it really, truly shines when it hits, like, the invasion arc, when we get into the Royal Capital. Like, that's where I feel like it shi- uh, truly shines, like, 20 chapters. But it's like, again, like, we're kind of, you have to go through half of the anime, I feel, just to get to the good parts. And then it gets, uh, again, and then it just, like, it is all over the place with this show, and again, I wish more episodes were like this. I like to feel like this is a point because I know, obviously, these episodes are really planned in advance. I know like they're normally a good couple of months ahead when it comes to planning these episodes. So I'd like to feel that with this, this was kind of like a a huge reception to a lot of the hu- uh, issues with the pacing and everything. Because I know it's not just the English audience; it's the Japanese audience as well that's been complaining about this. So that's signs that stuff is changing but it's all like the last eight odd episodes so yeah like that's gonna be weird where it's like if that's the case and hopefully that is the case where it's like this is what we're gonna be getting then straight up then the last couple of episodes are gonna be great and also as well as i was like bitching and moaning where it's like for a a while where it's like what the fuck are they doing like seriously we need to get to this uh the finale fight and all that and they're taking their fucking time with it and we know there are going to be additional stuff for like the last two episodes that they're going to be doing so i look very much forward to what they plan on doing and how they're planning to do that veto fight because the veto fight is insane um in the manga where it's just like it was some of the best stuff that they had and yeah no definitely the adaptation of this arc is a little bit like i enjoy it even with like the filler stuff that they had at the start of this arc i way enjoy this compared to like definitely the still the worst uh it's the worst uh part of the show is the first 13 episodes that is wholeheartedly and then i th- it honestly goes first arc then probably second mars with some of the stuff they were doing with that because it looked mainly rough for a lot of that period then it goes third fourth and then yeah like uh, i say still at the moment this is probably one of my favorite next uh, with this episode like generally this is like an eight compared to like a lot of the show's episodes have been fives and sixes and it's like this is a huge improvement and still not a, not a gorgeous episode not like a huge like there were some really good shots with like um luck i was seeing in this episode and same thing with mine i was like those two had some really stellar stuff and just a lot of the stuff like i know it's going technical into it but it's like a lot you can just tell by storyboarding and a lot of stuff it's like they actually gave a shit with this episode and it was like it sh- really shows like it's one of those episodes where i like i'm not going can we just get on with this like or like there's a part where i'm just looking down on my phone where it's like yeah uh-huh let's just drag this scene out for another couple of panels and i'm like that now and then it was this episode where i'm like i'm enamored i'm actually really paying attention and i'm really enjoying it so let me know you guys think the down below that's all for me thanks always for watching and i'll see you guys though next time